Welcome back guys. So today I will educate you about new experimental matrix in Core Web Vital which is IMT Interaction to Next Paint. This matrix will replace the FID matrix which is first input delay. If you haven't watched my video on FID, I'll put the link in description. But IMP matrix is more advanced matrix and provide better understanding how you can provide a smooth experience for your users. This is gonna be the last video in Core Web Vital series for now. As you know, Google change things time to time. So if they change something, I'm gonna create videos on those changes too. To watch this video in our Core Web Vital series, check the links in description. All these videos are for a few minutes. And it's really amazing chance to learn about these metrics in such a short time, which will really improve your user experience and make your business grow. And if you want to learn such amazing content, which is not easily available on YouTube, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel because these videos take a lot of time to create and they're available for you for free. So make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Okay, with this said, let's see what is INP metrics. So INP aims to represent a page's overall responsiveness by measuring all click, tap, keyboard interactions made with the page. Okay, let's understand INP by example. You can see on the left side, this is an example of poor responsiveness of the page. And on the right side, good example of the responsiveness of the page. When somebody clicks here, you can see this takes some time and it's not working very smooth. And on the right side, you click on the heading, you can see the content shows up very fast and very smooth experience. Let me give you another example. This is my website. When I click on this link, you can see the menu shows up. So this is really good example of INP. But if in your website, somebody click on this link and menu shows up very late, the website gonna fail for INP metrics for Google Pay Speed. And now there's a big question. What is the relation between FID and INP? how they're similar and how they're different. So as I explained in my last video, FID measures the first interaction by the user on your page, where INP measures all the interaction on the website, first, second, third, fourth, even all, even after loading the website completely, if user go to the other pages also. So INP calculate all those interactions and take the biggest interaction, which is taking the most of the time. So based on the time all those interactions are taking, INP metrics calculate the scores. Okay, now you know what is INP. Let's see what is a good INP score. Interaction next paint should be below than 200 milliseconds. If it is more than 200 seconds, your website gonna fail for INP metrics. So how to measure INP? There are a lot of tools available. One which I really like, which is really easy to use, is Google Pay Speed Inside. You can see this example website and this website is failing for INP metrics. This is around 900 milliseconds, which is very bad score for INP. Also, you can see this sign. This is the experimental feature. And this feature is going to replace FID in future. And as I told you already, FID measures only the first interaction of the web page, where INP measures all the interaction on the page. So it was a really good step by Google so that you can understand how you can make your user experience better. Okay, so let's see which events are involved calculating the INP scores. So clicking with the mouse, tapping on device touch screen, pressing a key on either a physical or on screen keyboard. And one more thing I want to mention hovering and scrolling doesn't contribute to the INP score. And guys, if you are still watching this video and you get some value out of this video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And if you're a student, share with your classmates. And if you're a designer, share with your colleagues. I really appreciate that. Okay, so let's see how to improve INP. To improve INP, you will need to focus on the when the website loads first and even after what happens when the page is loaded completely. Google wrote a blog about it, but right now I think it's really complicated for most of the people to understand. I'll put the link in description. If you're a developer with very good experience or if you're really interested to know in very much detail about INP, you can read the blog. But this warning is really complicated. So for most of you, I'll try to explain how to solve INP in most easy way. Okay, so here's how you can do this. So the first thing, remove unused code. So you should not have unused JavaScript or unused CSS code in your website, which you're not even using. I created a video about it. I'll put the link in description and the top card. You can check this video and remove the unused code you're not using on your website. Find code splitting opportunities so you can lazy load JavaScript not needed during a page load. Identify slow third-party JavaScript that may load during the startup. Ensure you're not asking too much of the browser in terms of rendering work during startup. Avoid large component tree rendering, huge dome sizes, larger image decodes, computationally expensive CSS animation, and everything which is heavy for the browser. You should minify the code. And if you want to say in one sentence, keep your website lighter. I created some videos which are really simple to implement. I'll put the links in the description. So just go and watch these videos and you can solve all these points which I explained how to solve INP. And guys, if you feel this video is complicated for you, rewatch this video and I highly suggest you to check the Core Web Vital series. Every video is a few minutes and once you watch all these videos, I think you can finish all these videos in the series in like 20 minutes or something. So it will be a really good chance for you to understand these metrics in detail and I'm sure you will learn a lot of things from this series. So guys, if you have 20 minutes to improve your knowledge and learn something really useful, I highly recommend you check the description. And like always, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. It's a real nice way to show support 
and say that you're liking my videos. And if you don't want to understand these things, if you just want to fix these things like quickly, check this video on the screen 